Hey everyone, welcome back. In the previous episode, we implemented the functionality regarding our voting for the voting poll, as well as user registration, where we extract the email supplied by the user and add it to our vote to basically track what user has voted on the voting poll. In today's episode, we're going to go ahead and implement integration testing, as one of the viewers has requested. And this fits the theme of the series quite nicely, so I decided to throw it in here. Since in here, integration testing is going to look quite easy, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's just spin up a new project and uh, we're going to look for a test project. We're going to select X unit test project, click next, voting system dot integration dot tests. Okay, create that. So this new file that we just received, let's go ahead and delete it. So what integration testing is about is all these components like statistics interactor, voting interactor, the way they come together in your UI. You want them to come together the same in the same way in your integration tests project, but however, you're going to assemble them manually. So how dependency injection takes care of injecting everything for you, you're now going to set everything up manually and run your assertions as usual. There are different methods, like for example, black box, white box, and gray box. Black box is essentially where you don't see the internals of your code, so you're not allowed to inspect stuff like the database, etc. It's just input output. White box is the opposite of black box, so you inspect the insides of your system, and gray box is the middle ground, so you do a little bit of both. There is no real preference to what to do here. I do probably mostly gray box. I check what I need to check. I don't stick to a methodology for the sake of sticking to a methodology. Pick what you need to do to make sure that you can trust that your system's working. Okay, so in here, let's go ahead and first we will create a test for the voting interactor, okay? It seems like a, rel a relatively simple one, so that's what we're going to do. Voting tests, okay? I'm not going to say that it's going to be a voting integration test because the project name already kind of implies that. So what I want to do then for my dependencies is just go ahead and grab the UI layer. You can go ahead and also grab the database and the application layer since you're going to be using these components. And what I'm actually going to do, instead of selecting voting system.database, I'm going to select voting system.database.test. So integration tests are okay with having a dependency on the database because if the database changes, most certainly your integration tests that dependent on that database will change in some way as well. So that dependency is fine. You're not guarding yourself against anything there. So I'll have my application and my voting system.database tests, plus I will opt in into the reusability of the in-memory database, okay? And I can use the factory that we use here to create the database as well. Okay, so voting test. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we do here. So we essentially produce some kind of a vote and we need an, a voting interactor for that. So let's go ahead and just set this up. So I'm going to grab the voting interactor and I'm going to say public void saves vote to database. Okay. And here I want to grab my interactor. Let's go ahead and create a new voting interactor. We're going to create a constructor and let's go ahead and import this. Okay. So the constructor will need a I voting system persistence. So let's go ahead and grab an I voting system persistence. We'll call it persistence and we'll grab a new voting system persistence. We'll delete the I here because that's where it lives in the database under the voting system persistence class, right? So we bring this in and then for this, we will need an AppDB context. So this is where we will need to use uh, the factory to create the AppDB context, okay? So AppDB context, let's create a DB context or let's just call it CTX as I call it the same everywhere else. And DB context, I can't remember what the class is exactly, DB context factory, use the rename trick to copy the name, import this and let's create a database where we're gonna pass the name of this, okay? So the name will be name of saves vote to database and there it is let's go ahead pass the context to here and let's go ahead and pass the persistence to here so this is pretty much the setup for the voting interactor right so we test each of these individual components integration tests are about testing all of these together so as for the setup to for my votes to succeed i will need some kind of 
voting poll in my database, right? So let's go ahead and uh, in the database tests in the voting system persistence, I have a voting poll here, I remember it, and I'm going to actually go ahead and grab it. And what I want to do is have this voting poll and just save it to the database. Okay, I'm going to import the models. I'm going to grab the context. I'm going to grab the voting polls. I'm going to add my poll. Okay. And for context, I'm going to save changes here. So this is pretty much the setup. Okay. For as, mu as many tests as you write, you're going to find uh, repeat repeatability. And same as I've showed you before with the other tests that we have done. You find things that repeat and you eliminate the repetition through common patterns, okay? Bring stuff out, initialize stuff from the constructor, make it global variables, etc. okay? So once we have arranged our setup, we want to go ahead and act, okay? So uh, how do we act? We grab the interactor, we call vote, and we need to go ahead and vote on something. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, initialize a new vote where I will have a user ID of, uh, let's say, I'll call him just user, and the counter ID will be 1, which is something that I will expect to exist from this counter. Okay, so I'm expecting this to be a successful vote. This doesn't return anything, and one thing that it does check is for a vote to exist. So this is somewhere where you can actually go ahead and write another integration test for this case. All right. So we do the vote. Let's go ahead and then try to assert in this. Okay, so we do the setup in kind of a white box way where we have the access to the inner workings of the system with the database and we kind of set it up through that. And because this doesn't return anything, we will also be using kind of white box testing to check the side effects of this function. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the vote from the database so i'm gonna grab the context i'm gonna go to votes and i'm gonna grab the single vote that it has produced okay and then here i'm going to assert uh x unit i haven't brought up x unit and i haven't made this a fact so this is a fact with the assert i'm gonna go ahead and check equals for user with the vote user id okay and assert dot equal one with vote dot counter id and i can do something going as far as counter equals context uh, wrong button counters include includes let's go ahead and bring in this function and here i want to include the votes okay and i will select the first uh, one where the id is one as well okay so this is just to know because internally in the, the statistics controller i know that this is something that's going to happen i will be extracting votes depending on the counters so i want to make sure that this is something that the app db context is going to be doing it's going to be cre creating a vote object that is then going to be relating to the counters okay which is one of these counters you can argue that this uh, test uh, this this testing clause right here is not going to belong to here but nevertheless it's something that you can do as long as remember that it's just if it works for you and it helps you understand that your system isn't breaking it's worth putting in there so let's assert single that the counter has votes with a single vote that we have just created okay and this will essentially be enough because this single vote will essentially say that there is only one vote in the database and here we check that this one vote indeed does belong to this counter and what you can do is you can move these bits up here to kind of stay in this act stage but this is more of an assert stage and i'd like to keep them in their respective bundles this way okay this kind of reminds me of layered architecture and this is just a little bit more module okay so tests uh, right we want to run this we want to see if this is working right uh, so here we have our new set of tests let's go ahead and run this okay and it's passing right what we want to do now is sort of lean towards black box tests so let's go ahead and uh, bring in a test that is going to be a little bit more intense okay so what are we what i'm gonna do is create a constructor and clean this up a little bit because stuff is going to be all over the place otherwise 
Let's go ahead and create a private. It's going to be an AppDB context. We're going to call it CTX. And we're going to initialize it from the constructor. We're going to grab this bit here. We're going to put it in the constructor. And instead of the name here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a, a good and I'm going to generate a new good for each database here. And if I remember correctly, the constructor is run separately for each one of these functions. Okay. Uh, next thing, persistence. Let's go ahead and grab this private persistence underscore. Let's go ahead and initialize it. Persistence equals new underscore CTX. And the same thing with the interactor. Can actually probably initialize it this way. Might be a little bit easier. Yep. Uh, then the voting poll. We could probably use the voting poll here. So let's go ahead and create a private voting poll and we'll say new poll. This will be a function that is just literally going to give us a new poll that we can use. Okay. And this is probably that something could be put into a mock object here that you can reuse that function. Same kind of way that we bring in the DB context factory, but this can be a mock factory and there you will be like right create me a new voting poll etc you might pass some parameters depending on how many counters you want on your voting poll etc this that is just a way to vary your tests okay and let's go ahead make sure this compiles pass persistence there on the poll let's go ahead and say new poll here uh, we're gonna fix all the references here uh, we're not checking against the poll anywhere else, so we can actually go ahead and pass the function right here. Let's go ahead, fix the other names, and you can see the test is already looking a little bit more readable. So we can go ahead and rerun all the tests because I just pressed the button, so... And it's nice to see the whole thing light up green, right? So let's kick it up a notch. So essentially, this interactor, what I want to do is I want to rename it. I want to rename it to a voting interactor because that's what it is and it is in the voting test but essentially in the voting test what i also want to test is be, being able to create a voting poll first and then doing the vote so we're going to do the same thing again but instead of creating this voting poll we're going to trigger the creation through the where we do it on the index page through the voting poll interactor so i'm just going to grab this and i'm going to go into the voting tests and i'm going to create a Poll interactor, new voting poll interactor. There we go. What do we need in our voting poll interactor? Nothing yet. We will need to bring in a namespace. I'm just wondering, are these in a different namespace? Voting system application. And this is voting system application. Okay. So this seems to be the wrong namespace. So we're going to highlight this namespace. And I'm going to delete the I here and put the I on the end here, and that will be okay. Our other should be okay. Let's go ahead and remove the other namespace, close this, and remove this unneeded namespace. Okay, so we have the voting poll interactor. The two things that we're gonna need is the voting poll factory and the I voting system persistence. So let's go ahead and create the voting poll factory that we can use, and the persistence one, we already have it. So let's go ahead and put a comma, and pass the persistence layer. Let's go ahead and see in our voting system where our voting poll factory is. I'm just going to go ahead, grab the name here, double check that it's not consuming anything in its uh, constructor. It is not, so I can go ahead and close that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and pass a new instance here in the constructor. Okay, and I'm going to generate a field for this voting poll interactor. I'm aware it's not going to be used in this test. And usually when you do integration testing, you're going to have a bunch of these, right? In big systems, you're going to have a bunch of time at work to write these tests because you want to make sure that your software works. Right here in this tutorial, I have limited amount of time. So I hope you can appreciate the fact that I'm not going to write integration tests for the whole system because that's just going to take up too much time. I'm just going to show you the main points of how you can do it, give you a couple of ideas, and then you can go off and practice this in your own time. Okay, so we have the poll interactor, uh, saves here we're basically checking that it saves vote to database when voting poll exists. And then we want another fact where we're going to say public void saves vote to database after poll created 
with interactor. That's exactly what we're doing. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab our poll interactor. Here we have it. Beautiful guy. We want to be able to create a voting poll and we will need a request to be to create this voting poll as well. So let's go ahead and to this function. We'll grab this type right here and we're just going to go ahead and create this request new request and here we will need to provide a few things so again f12 to just quickly go and see that we need title description and names so let's go ahead and provide that for title we want title nothing too creative just simple things right here we want new array of strings uh, let's say what kind of polls do we want one and two Okay, I'm happy with that. Uh, create a voting poll. Let's go ahead and pass our request here. We don't necessarily need to store this here. We can go ahead and just pass this here unless we're planning on reusing this and somehow in some way this uh, this request is essentially what the same as what's going to produce here. Obviously the title and description is a little bit different, but again, this is something that you can put in a class similar to the DB context factory but like a mock factory. That's going to be creating your mock voting polls and your mock requests, your mock anything really. All right, it's just going to be static function. So we got the poll interactor. We are creating the voting poll and it's a void again, right? We don't know what's going to happen, but this is essentially our setup class. Okay, this is where we arrange. Okay, and then again on the voting interactor, we are going to vote. So we're going to actually copy this function at the top here. So I'm going to highlight it right there. We're going to copy that, paste that here, and this is pretty much uh, the thing that we want to check, right? Same thing down here. All right, let's go ahead and run our tests. Okay, so this is pretty much it for integration testing. It's just either checking through like inputs and outputs, and then maybe if your functions uh, return something, you check the output. Otherwise, you check stuff in the database. The key takeaway here is make sure to write your tests in a way that let you know if your system is working correctly. You don't need to test everything. Testing everything takes a lot of time. If you're okay with not knowing that some bits of your system don't work, you better be really okay with it. Okay, use your own discretion to test the things that you need. Just know that the integration testing, you don't do any mocking. The only mocking that you do is of these objects. All the functional pieces like your database, your factories, right? These are all meant to be working components and you can arrange your test to use one or more interactor or all of them together, right? That could be your God integration test. But yeah, hopefully this gives you a good example of how integration testing can be accomplished. If you have any questions on this, make sure to leave them in the comment section. But otherwise, if you enjoyed this episode, leave a like, subscribe. Don't forget to join the Discord server. And as always, I'll see you in the next episode.